Okay, here we go. So we're recording. Uh, so like I was saying, I just basically want to go over some of the tools that we have at FIT that, um, that you can utilize or leverage to create discussions in your face-to-face -face or in your online class. And then I also want to talk about uh, how you can gamify some of these discussions just to incentivize students and just to make it a little bit more fun so that students can um, um, get, you know, there's some motivation uh, to the whole discussion process. And then um, I have a couple of uh, demos. I'm going to show some examples of uh, some of these discussions and, and then I can if we have time, I can go through them and, and we can create some of them together so I can show you how you can actually create these on your own. And then I will have time, a little time after two, uh, sorry, after three, if anyone wants to stay back, stay behind and talk a little bit about how I can, uh, you know, how, to, how we can create these. And like in all my workshops, I don't want to be the only person talking. So if you want to jump in and say something or share, I will, we will be happy to hear ideas and 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 anything that you would like to share with the group. So I'm not the only person talking. I, I don't want to be the only person talking. So let me start with sharing the screen so I can um, so we can start. Um, and if so, if if you're not if you're not familiar with gamification, I know it's a it's, it's a word that carries a lot of baggage, but it, it can mean many things um, in gamification. But uh, basically, is um, it's exactly what it means is like you know uh, implementing the game mechanics into either your teaching or discussions or anything. You can actually implement gamification for any of those things. Um, but we're going to cover a little bit of that too today. So don't worry, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. So the three tools that I want to cover today for creating discussions, the first one is Blackboard discussions, which is, let me go to Blackboard real quick. Uh, as you all know, you can find it right here in the um, in, in Blackboard, you can go to um, discussions. And this is the most basic, right? This will be something very straightforward, right? In most cases, faculty like to use these for simple questions, uh, this simple discussion prompts, and then have the students go into the thread. And then you might say to them, well, we need, uh, I need one post and maybe two replies to others, you know, to your fellow classmates. That's what normally happens. Um, and, and this again, is very basic. There's, there is, you know, there's not a way for students to record video responses. This is basically heavy. Uh, this is basically text, right? So text responses. And so as, we, as we're going through all the three tools that we're going to cover today, I'm going to explain the pros and the cons to each one. Um, with the Blackboard discussion, what's really great about this is just it's, it's already embedded within Blackboard. So, it's, you know, you're not working with a new tool. This is already all inside Blackboard, right? So you can just go in here, go to discussions, open it up and create a discussion uh, thread like an icebreaker. And then the students can come in there and then just uh, post. The pros, the good things about using discussion board and Blackboard is that this is integrated into the into the gradebook, and that that and this is one of the things that we're going to talk about as we compare all three tools. This is a great feature because then you can just go in there and give a give a student a grade. You know, look at their look at their uh, uh, post, and right then and there you can give the student a grade, and that grade automatically gets pushed into the gradebook. That's that's great. That's, that's an awesome uh, feature to have. Um, also, and then also um, you can uh, ha have that average of how many discussion boards you have too, which is a really nice feature. Oh yes, yes. Like you mean like let's say like if you say I have one post, and then I want you to do two replies. Blackboard will not allow you to grade that student until those 
until they complete, right? That's what you're no. saying, Patricia? Like, no, but that, that, that's another thing, too, is that they have to do their own work, and, and they can't just copy from somebody else. They've got to oh. give theirs. But, yeah. but in my case, um, it's a totally asynchronous class. So I have uh, eight discussion boards, and, so I, and each of them, they're equal weight. And uh, so that I, I can just, it, it, the Blackboard will, will average that and also uh, even do a percentage of, it's 40% of the grade. So then it'll give me that as well. Yeah, that's a great point you make. And then, uh, that's a great point you make, Patricia. That's like uh, moderate. And, and you, we'll see that feature uh, in the three tools that we'll talk about today. And, and moderate is a great uh, uh, feature to have because like Patricia said, a lot of these students sometimes will go into the discussion board, they'll wait until someone else posts and then they'll read it and then they'll just either copy or get the answer from the other posts and then they would just put their post based on what they read and from other students right so that's a, that's very interesting that's a very important thing to know you can do that in blackboard discussions where you can say that they cannot read the other students posts until they do their own initial post so that's another thing i think about Right. If, if that's something that's important to you, that you don't want them to copy other posts. Um, one setback that I don't like about um, Blackboard discussions is the fact that you can't create teams. That that's. I mean, you could, you could, but it's not. There's not a mechanism in place for you to move people into teams, and then. I mean, you could do it. You could do it, but you have to do it to through um the groups and, and it's a little bit cumbersome but I, I wish that feature was already in the discussion board but it's not and and i hope that when we move over to brightspace that might be something that they you know they'll have in brightspace which is creating teams for discussions um, um but that's pretty much it for 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 blackboard discussions very straightforward right you it, it heavy it'll be just text-based and like uh, Patricia said, you can moderate, uh, it, 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 you can grade directly from here. And also it will keep track of the students. If they've done those three, the initial polls and two replies, then it will alert you this, hey, this person has completed all the requirements. And now you can go ahead and grade the student instead of you having to go and chase those students. So then any questions before we leave Blackboard uh, discussions or any comments or ideas? <coughs> no? All right. So the, the next the next tool I want to cover is uh, VoiceThread. And Patricia, I know you use VoiceThread, right, on your course? Yes, I do. But I, oh, okay. I, I, I do it more as, as just a lecture. And uh -huh. uh, I, I've been trying to figure out how I would do it um, as uh, interactive and 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 still have the um, the critical thinking um, uh, showing research that kind of thing element it, it's nice if it's just some kind of conversational flow some kind of banter but mm -hmm. I'd, I'd love to hear if anybody has any suggestions on how to do it as more of a <clears throat> a critical thinking yeah, because instead of using all these discussion boards in written form, to have something where it, 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 it provides a little bit more um, uh, um, 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 a, a difference, you know, that they can do one at least. Or, right. But right. I don't know how to grade that and put that into the into the mix, you know? Sure, I'm sure. Explain, I'm explaining that. Am I? No, that's a, that's a great that's a great thing you bring that up, Patricia. Because this this example that I'm going to show you next, this is coming from a professor, a professor at FIT. Oh, I think I have echo here. Oh, it went away. Okay, so this is a professor, uh, she, she, Professor Wong, Lorenzo Wong. She allowed me to go into her course, and I I, I worked with her quite a bit, and and uh, she was able. She was she said that's okay. I can show her um, her discussion. And this is a little bit what Patricia uh, describes. Just described. It's it's a it's a lecture type voice thread, and then at the end she she has a discussion slide that's based off the lecture. So let me show you real quick how that looks. How it looks like. Oh, actually, that's at the end. So. 
let me go to the beginning. So as you can tell, this is a voice thread and there's 23 slides in here. So it's about, yeah, total 23 slides, as you can see here at the top. And these slides are actually lecture slides. Not all of them have her voiceover, as you can see. This one doesn't have a voiceover, but this one does, right? So this slide has a voiceover. So that's important to know that you don't have to record your voiceover on every slide. Um, only on the slides that actually you feel um, need your your voice to explain the slide. And so as you as as a student goes through the lecture slides and listens to the professor, when you get when the student gets to the end of the the slide deck, this is now the discussion part. And so what, what you're having here is a combination of lect lecturing and then also the discussion all built together as one, um, you know, one, um, and when one, it could be done in one sit sitting, right? So the student can sit down, go through the lecture, and even if they, if they, if they have to take a break and come back, Voice thread remembers where the student left off, and they, you know, they can start, they can pick up where they left off, and then here now she has a discussion prompt that is based on the lectures that we just went through real quickly, right? Um, and like Patricia just said, this this what is different between voice thread and Blackboard, just like the name implies, voice thread. VoiceThread allows students to record their post. Um, uh, you know, they allows to record their voice, so they can record their voice as a, as a discussion, as a as a as a post to the discussion. Um, so on the left hand side here, these are um, uh, students who have responded to the discussion prompt. And um, one of the things that we, we talked about earlier was, uh, I think Patricia, you mentioned it, uh, to moderate, right? Because, so if you, don't want a, if, if you don't want the student to listen to someone else's post, they have to record their post first before being uh, given access to hear everyone else's post. You can do that as well here in VoiceThread, just like in Blackboard discussion that we talked about, that maybe you don't want your students to read uh, the posts, and they have their, they have their force to record their 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 their, their uh, discussion, and then they get access to the the posts from everyone else. So that's also here at a, in um, VoiceThread. The other thing that you get with VoiceThread is that this is integrated into Blackboard, and so that what that means is if a student uh, does the initial post and the two replies you'll get alerted okay this student has done everything has done the initial post has replied twice you need to give the student a grade and so then you go to the student's name and then when you click on the student's name then you get all the posts the initial post and all the replies for you to and to give that student a grade okay um do, do, and, do do you want me uh -huh. to uh, uh, speak to that or not? Sure, sure. Go ahead. If you, do you want to go uh, ahead? And I, what I, I have is um, it, it, it's a very formal use of discussion boards that they have to cite sources of where they got their information from, and they have a certain amount of paragraphs to do it and a certain amount of, of um, citing of sources. And OK, so init their initial prompt, I call it an IR, initial response, and then and I, I I don't know any other way of doing it, so that's uh, I, what I do is just put a one up there and tell them, okay, uh, this is a temporary grade of one uh, that will be there until uh, we have your reaction response to calculate a full grade for this discussion board. But then there's on, there's on, there's, so there's two elements. So the first element is 60% and the, the second element is 40%. Um, I don't know how else to do it. Does anybody else have any suggestions on that one? It works. Um, 
but you know i'm i'm always uh, uh putting it in in the announcements and in the uh, uh welcome read this first is that this is what you will see and then there's invariably somebody isn't reading and they'll say well whoa i got a one how come i got a one out of a hundred and so then i write back and say well that's only a temporary grade and that's there uh, so that i know that you did your initial response and then i will i will comment on their initial responses so that and 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 they will have a chance to in 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 all of all of the dbs um they can um uh, i give them unlimited attempts so they can redo it um if they want to uh, uh, answer the the comments and and and, and edit the work um, um, but I was I, the only other way I use this the voice thread is as a an icebreaker. Mm -hmm. Then that's fine. Then uh, that that's fine because now students are are just explaining themselves, and I give them you know or, or, or like two or three main points to follow or whatever, and so that they at least get to know one another um, and uh, as a, as an actual person, not as just this um, um, asynchronous you know make gives it a little bit more. Um, humanity to it, I think. Um, but um, again, if so, does somebody else have any suggestions as, as to that? How do they handle the in, uh, a, the initial response? And then if uh, you're saying that most people do two reaction responses, is what I'm hearing. Am I correct with that or not? Yeah, I mean th yeah, that's I what I most. Oh, Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, is there no. a way to attach a rubric to this? Yeah, um, I do. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm so uh, sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh no, that's okay. No, no, just because um, I guess when the students reference then the rubric, or if you're grading through the rubric, they'll see exactly that they did not respond if they only um, did the initial response and didn't respond to any of their classmates. Um, but I guess is um, I guess a question for Jose is uh can the vo can the voice thread or, or either of you i'm sorry can the voice thread be attached to a, a rubric that's already embedded in blackboard yeah uh, be uh, great uh, jose jose do you want me to show her what we did sure sure you uh, you can show your screen patricia or, or either way whatever okay. if you want to yeah, show where you okay. have there okay. okay thanks i hope um, i'm not off topic there but just, no, no, no. This is this is perfect because yeah, rubrics are actually a great way to to speed up grading. But Patricia will show what she did in her course. But the, go ahead, Patricia. Okay. Um, hold on. Let me just uh, find it first. And um, as Patricia's looking for 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 the okay. example. I, I, I'm just, right? Okay. I'm just. Okay. I'm sorry. Yes. Go go forward. Sure, sure. Yeah. If you can share your screen, okay. Patricia, that'd be great. Right, maybe maybe you can just go on and out until I find it rather than waste your time here. Oh, you want me? Okay, I can. You want me to go into your course oh. and show? Them? I think I think I have it. Let's see. Okay, does everybody see? I I shouldn't be. Okay, I'm, I'm blocking out the student's name, or trying to. Do you see that? No, we don't. We don't see your. We, I don't. We. You, I don't think you're sharing your screen. Okay, hold um, on. Let me, let me go do it again. Are you seeing it now? No. Um, oh, interesting. Okay. Let me try again from scratch. But I'm sorry, the rubric is created in Blackboard, though, not not connected to VoiceThread. Yeah, yeah. The, okay, right. and now can, uh, uh, Pam, can you see it now? There we yes. go, yes. Yeah, but it's a, okay. it's a Blackboard so here's the, here, discussion. Here's, here's the rubric. Yes. And that's the one that yeah. I created. Yeah, yeah. Right. And uh, okay, and, but this is a so, black discussion, not through the voice thread discussion, because okay. that might be a con of the voice oh, thread. Oh, oh, you I'm so sorry. Okay, it. I'm sorry. No, no, that's okay. Yes. I'm sorry. So would that be true. then a con? What? I guess that'd be a con of the voice thread lecture mm -hmm. or a discussion board at the end of the lecture is that you can't connect it to the rubric in in blackboard 
Right. Uh, VoiceThread doesn't have a, a rubric integrated into into the into the, the VoiceThread system. It, right. You have to go in through uh, through your gradebook and then create the rubric that way. Then and then it, it does link it that way. So I hope that answers that. Would I? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, great. Great. I guess. Sure. Sure. And, and the other thing I want to mention about VoiceThread is I think Patricia touched a little bit on it. Is it's what we call authentic assessments, which for Patricia's course is perfect because she teaches speech. You know, a lot, a lot of the students are doing presentations and they're speaking. And you, and so for her, VoiceThread, is, is, it works great because then students can uh, video record themselves or even do audio. I mean, it depends what you're looking for. But with, with that type of what the authentic assessments, you're, you give the student an opportunity to say, okay, here, show, this is your opportunity to tell me, show me that you know this material. Not to say, you know, I can't say they're not reading it from somewhere or they're looking at, but it's a, you know, in the voice, it comes a little closer to what you normally do in face-to-face -face class. And as a teacher, I call these the superpowers that teachers always have: is the ability to to look at a student in the classroom. You can tell by body language. You can tell by are they distracted? Are they bored? And you know, don't those skills that only teachers teachers are, uh, fine tune those skills that they can read a student's behavior and by body language. You kind of get that in the voice. You can kind of kind of hear a little, you know, what's going on with the student. And again, if you are teaching an online class, again, want to humanize the experience, and at least now they have a voice to your face or a voice to the student's face. You know, so that's where voice thread kind of shines. The con, now let's go a little bit to the cons. I know, I, I know Pamela, uh, voice thread has improved over the years. It's, you know, I, I know there were a lot of people that used it early on and they were, oh, this is so clunky. This is horrible. It's hard to use. Um, it could be a little daunting for some who are new to the tool. They've improved over the years. Um, it, just recently, the latest upgrade allows you to copy the course over to a new course shell and the voice threads carry over from the original class. And then there's a feature now that allows you to remove all the old comments in one shot and just to keep either your comments or just to remove all comments. That's a huge, huge advantage that uh, was very difficult <laughs> in the past years to as a professor, go in there and clean these up and have to remove all these students' uh, recordings. That is no longer an issue. So in that way, I, I would say there's a pro to that and then the con to it because it, it's still a little bit difficult to use. So I would say if you're new to VoiceThread, just you know, um, slowly transition into a new tool and don't do it middle of semester. Don't do this. Don't go with voice thread. You know, practice it, learn it, master it before you actually implement it. Whereas Blackboard discussion, you can jump on it. You you can start running on it like you know. There's no really learning curve, no steep learning curve. Whereas voice thread, now we we're bringing up the level a little higher. So that's where I want to I want to paint the picture as to this is another a higher level where Blackboard discussion is entry level, and now we're moving up to a next tier, which would be voice thread. Anybody want to comment or make a, any questions before we move over to the next tool? Well, you you were just talking voice start, so before we even move over, <coughs> I just uh, started attending a, 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 the hour before was a voice thread for uh, D2L, the Bright Space that we're going to be moving to, and uh, I, I, it it wasn't really practical because I didn't have anything to really practice from there I didn't have the shell however mm -hmm. um, a part part of what uh, what he did say which was nice is that anything that we have worked through blackboard that is on voice thread is is is, is will still be there when we yes. when we we go over to d2l which was I was very happy to hear that <laughs> <laughs> so I had to lose all of those you know so, yeah. so, yes let me let me just reiterate that that's a great point Anyone in the room that's using currently using VoiceThread or has in the past, don't worry. As we move over to Brightspace, like like Patricia just mentioned, you're not going to lose any of those things. Actually, 
the 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 um, it'll be very much the same. I don't think much will change actually. Everything will be almost the same the way that you've been using VoiceThread. So don't be alarmed. I think George has a question. Go ahead, George. Oh, I think George, you, George, you raised your, you raised your, oh, here it is. Sorry, his mic is not working. Uh, George is saying, I just want to be clear that both VoiceThread and Padlet can be embedded in Blackboard. So yes, George, the question, the answer is yes. Um, all the tools that we're covering today, actually the three tools that we're covering today are easily embedded into Blackboard and will also be easily embedded. Uh, in, you can easily embed Embed, embed all three into Brightspace. So the answer is yes to Blackboard and yes to Brightspace. And now that you mentioned okay, Padlet. We, we, uh, we had that ahead, question please. about um, is, uh, is VoiceThread and Padlet uh, also, uh, are they, can, can they be part of the Grade Center? So yeah, so we're gonna, that's a great, a great segue to, into Padlet. So this is where Padlet, <laughs> the pros and cons with Padlet. So thank you for sure. So, so let me share the screen again, because now we're gonna move over to Padlet. So, you know, you have a lot of options. We, we covered Blackboard uh, discussions. We then we did VoiceThread, much more different modalities, because in, in VoiceThread, you can do text, audio, and video. And so now we're gonna move over to Padlet and Padlet has many options so we're, we're moving up the the ladder here so just so, so everybody is clear um <coughs> this, is, this would be a higher level so now we're moving to pad let me share my screen so you can see i'm going to share three examples in padlet and because padlet has so many options very versatile i will i will show you the first one. This is this one is using. So first, let me just say that Padlet has, I think, it's about seven different types of templates, around seven or so. I forget how many they they they, they used to have eight. I think now they have seven. Each template has it's it has its own character. They have what's called the grid shelf template. Actually, let me show it to you. So it's probably easier to just to show you. So this is what Padlet looks like. And first, just let me tell you, you can find Padlet right away, easily, right here on the top right corner on Blackboard. So if you never used Padlet before and you have no idea where Padlet is, it's right under your name when you log into Blackboard. And there's a link there. That's, and you'll see the word. You, you'll see Home, Library, Help, LinkedIn Learning. And then you'll see Padlet. Um, and this is, I want to show you the link because it's very important. If you use the free account, you're only going to have, you're only going to be allowed to create three paths, I think, under the free account. But we at FIT are fortunate that the school's paying for it for us. And so you have um, unlimited number of Padlets you can use. This is the pro account. And so when you click on that link, it takes you to a dashboard, and this is the Padlet dashboard. I don't want to go too deep because I don't. We ha we have a workshops just on how to use Padlet, and we also have a lot of video tutorials. If you're interested, you can either come to a workshop on Padlet or just watch one of our videos. But this is this is where the dashboard is, and if I were to create a new Padlet, I just go here and click Make a Padlet. And this is what I was referring to, the templates. So as you can see, there's seven different types of Padlets. Here we have a wall. And this is very much like your refrigerator door, where you have post-it notes all over the <laughs> all over the refrigerator. I have my my kids, dentist, phone number, you know, all the emergency numbers on the front of the refrigerator. This is what the wall will look like, right? These are your students posting on on, on the fridge. <laughs> stream it's like twitter and that's like twitter in the sense that it's a streamline right it's one post at the top there's a post right under that one so it's a long like a snake right like a twitter feed this is what the stream looks like this is what the stream will look like then you have what's called a grid and the grid is very much like the wall 
but it's a little bit more organized in, in a sense that it's three across and three down. And then you can arrange and move around. Like you can take the, those post those post-its that are on the refrigerator door and then move them around. You're, you have the ability to move things around. And then you have what the shelf template is. And the shelf is the most popular one. And I'll, I'll give you an example of the shelf later because I think this is one of the most popular ones and I think the best one for discussions. And it's basically a table and you create columns and you can create columns for each student or you can create columns for if you were to scaffold an assignment. So step one, step two, step three, and so forth. So shelf is, shelf could, could be done, can be used for many different ways. Uh, map is basically what is, it means. It's a map and then you can tell your students in an icebreaker, well, pin, pin on the map where you were born or where you come from, or maybe uh, post jobs opportunities for, uh, on the map and you can pin them on the map so students can post, well, if I want to become a, you know, a person, an illustrator, where can I find positions on an illustrator? And so they could pin those job opportunities on the map. I mean, there's many, many ways that you can use this one. The next one is a canvas. This one is really cool and it's great for critical, critical thinking if you want to have discussions on uh, higher level thinking where students actually have to create a post and then associate or make a connection from their initial post to someone else's post. And so they're linking posts and it becomes like a spider web where everything is linking to each other. And I'll show you an example of that in a second. And the last one that we have is called the timeline. And the timeline is basically just that, it's a timeline, right? So, so students can, if you, if you say, let's say, if you split up the class into teams and you're telling them, you're teaching them, let's say, art history, and you're covering, you're covering let's say, an artist, let's say, Michelangelo, and then the team has to then cre uh, post highlights of that person's career and they have to do the research. And this, this becomes a timeline for the students, right? So they put their discussions posts right in these little bubbles and, and they put the date and they move from left to right as a timeline. So anyway, I wanted to briefly go through all, I, I know I went really quick, but these are the seven different uh, types of Padlets that you can create. Um, and so let me give you some examples because without examples, you know, the creativity you want, it is it, better to able to see a Padlet because then you can actually visualize and then maybe you can then have ideas will come up from there. So my first example of a Padlet is a, um, a debate. Now this here, I'm using the canvas template. This is the one that allows you to move. As you can see, I can move anything around. And it also allows you to make connections, connect to a post, right? So I can say connect to this one. And you see how now these, this, this one is connecting to this one. So this is the Canvas template. And the reason why I love this one for debate, let's say you want your students to debate each other. And so what I said to them, I, I came up with a, a, a prompt, should facial rec recognition be banned? So I can leave this open for the class to decide to go either to the red side, which is the con or those who are against facial recognition or those who are for re uh, facial recognition. And that could be on the green side. So if I change my mind, I can simply hop over to the green side. And the way that you can gamify this is you can say to the you can say to the class, I want you to pick a side. Are you pro facial recognition or are you against facial recognition? Create a post by clicking on this pink uh, plus sign here. And then here you're going to say, well, I am pro fa um, facial recognition. 
Now you can require them to either do it in, uh, the response could be in text. So this is my response in text format. Or you can ask your students to record the video response. Right, you can see here video recorder. So that, that there you have text, then you have video, then you can choose audio. So we're covering all modalities here, similar to voice thread, text, audio, or video. And so there, therefore, you can have your requirements set in the instructions here. You can say to them, you can you can leave it open. You can do video, audio, or text, or you can say your response has to be in video. Then the then the why. Why are you pro facial recognition? Okay, well, Patricia mentioned earlier that she has her students cite works to their discussion prompts. Uh, to the right, Patricia, discuss you have them cite. Yes, yes. So look at this. So then here you can have them uh, do a search, right? So they can go into here, back into the little three dots and say, well, uh, you know, let's see what I can find on facial recognition. This is now a Google search within the, the within Padlet. Now the students are doing the research. Bias facial recognition bath. I don't know. I'm just All right, so now I can start citing some articles here, you know, so, you know, they, they can, they, I can, I can do my research or I, from directly from the Padlet, I can look up images that are re regarding facial recognition, images, GIFs, videos on YouTube. And so now a, a case for banning facial recognition, New York Times. So if I want to, I want to, if I want to use that to back up my argument, then I can just click on it. And then now if I'm going on the green side, I can make my post green, right? So now I'm color coding my post because I want to, even though I chose a background that already has the green and the red, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. You can have your students create their post and color code the posts. So now this is green and this is red. So let me switch over sides. I should have had this side on this side. And so in this game or this debate, you can you can tell your students you're trying to um, you you have to post your argument, but in the same time you're trying to win over the students to your side, right? So you can make it you can make it in a, a, like a game where you have to let's see which side gets the most people and how many people can you win over. And if and if you 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 change someone's mind from the green side over to the red, you can double up the points because now you just changed someone's mind. Your argument was strong enough. So I mean, these are ways that you can kind of make it a little bit more fun. Uh, and so this is this is the Canvas tool in Padlet. Um, real quick, let me show you how you can upload your own image for the background. You can always go here and I hear a question. I'll be there for, I'll be in the, I'll answer the question in one second, but I just want to show you that Padlet gives you uh, background images. So you can simply go here to the wallpaper and you can choose solid colors or pictures and things like that. But also you can import. So, you know, you can import an image. In this case, I wanted a red side and a green side. So I did a Google search. I said, well, Google, find me um, a debate where red and green. And so I, get, I came up with this and I downloaded the image and then I uploaded it to Padlet and I placed it, I placed the, the red and green image onto my Padlet. So that gave me, you know, the ability for students to jump from left to right. All right, who, I hear a question. Let me, let me turn it, turn it over to who, who's asking. Let me go back to the chat. Here it is. Uh, I, I, I don't I don't see who was asking. Pamela, Pamela, Pamela asked the question. Oh, oh, thank you, Patricia. Yes, I see it. Can you also remind us where we can find the prior Padlet instruction re instructional recording? Are they on this? 
Okay. Yes. Oh, thank you, Patricia. Yes, it, they're on the YouTube on our YouTube channel, and I, I will send it to you, um, uh, Pamela. I'll send you the link to our YouTube channel, so then you can subscribe to it, and then you'll get all our wonderful videos. Subscribed, but it's it's under your name, right, mm -hmm. Jose Diaz? No, no, it's actually under the fashion. So it it would be fashion. I think it's online learning. Fashion online is learning. FIT okay. online learning. Yeah. All righty. So. Did anybody find that debate? The, you're welcome. Thanks. Thanks for the question. <laughs> um, you know, so so that's that's one way to use Padlet as a debate. If you want your students to go at, at it at each other and then make it into a game and see how many people you can win over to your side, you know, you can even assign a person, uh, you know, or a team of people to be pro, and then the other side. You know, let's say five of the students are pro and they got to win everybody over. And then the other side, you have five people. And then now you have 20 students that have to decide, am I pro or am I against? So that's a way you can gamify your discussions. Any questions so far about, about this one right here, the debate? Okay, so I'm going to move on. And you know, one of the reasons why I said I, I have to do a workshop on discussions is because as you, I, and I know, I know Patricia, you know Michael, Michael, uh, Professor um, Kokinos, who, who, who led the, uh, the video production workshop about, I think it was last year. The screencast he, he, he was so yes, darling. Yes, he so, did the screencast so and, and, yeah. So, so. Uh, Professor Coquino invited me over to his course, and I took the opportunity to ask the student questions. And um, a lot of the students were complaining about discussions, and they were saying, "Well, a lot of professors, all of them, do the same thing. Well, they have you, you know, go to Blackboard discussions, and they'll have you post one initial reply by Wednesday, and then by by Monday you have to have two replies or something like that." And they said it was, you know, they were complaining that I can, you know, a lot of the times I was just copying the answers from other students and I found it that a lot of times the instructor wasn't um, joining in the conversation, you know, wasn't part of the conversation. And so a lot of the students were becoming the teachers in, the, in those discussion forums and they were just, well, this is what this is, this is what that was. And so there was a lot of misinformation. So that's one of the takeaways that I had from those, from that, like, that I called the, for that focus group that I had for, with students, and, you know. So, so I think it's also very important for this professor to. There's a careful balance between too much and too little, and so you really have to read your students as to how much participation, how much you have to be involved in the in the discussions, not to be overwhelming and take it over, but also not to be out of the picture. So that's another. Care, uh, another consideration that you have to be um, mindful of is how much, how, how, you know, how much, how, how, how involved are you going to be part? How much involved are you going to be in this discussion? Are you going to be all over it? It's just going to be you constantly replying to every student, or you're going to be very quiet and not be involved at all. So that's that's something you got to think about. I hear a question or hands up. Joanne. Oh, Joanne. I think you might have to unmute yourself, Joanne. No. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on, but Joanne, if you're able. Oh, okay, okay. So everything's okay. All right, real quick, I just want to cover these last two examples, and then we'll we'll stop there, and then I'll I'll hand out a um, a quick survey because now we have to we're doing we're <laughs> we're doing surveys for the workshops. Uh, oh, this <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Um, uh, this one is the most popular one in Padlet. This is a shelf template, and in this shelf template. I asked the students, what do you think are the beliefs and values that define American culture? Mm. And so this is a shelf template. And 
the shelf template, when you're first building it, takes a little bit of time. But once you've added every student to the to the Padlet, it, you can always uh, make a copy of it and clone it so that you don't have to type in all the names all over again. It becomes like a cookie cutter. Um, but if you need help with this, I'll be happy to show you how to do it. And I'd be happy to build one together with you if, you if you're interested in this one. But what I love about this and what faculty tell me that they love, why they love this so much is because in one shot, you can see everybody. You'll see Mary, you see Tom, you see Greg, and you see Joanne all in one shot. And then you can see that, well, Mary didn't do her, you know, Mary didn't do the discussion. Well, Tom did, Greg did it, but Mary didn't do it. So you know who did it, who didn't do the work. Also, there's a little bit of a pressure for the students because this person did it, where's mine, you know? And so there's a little bit of ownership that, that you know, a little bit of pressure on them that everyone's doing it where, where, you know, I should, where's mine? I haven't done mine. We also talked about moderating in the beginning. I think Patricia mentioned it, right? So you can do the same thing here in, in Padlet where if you don't want the students to look at each other's posts and copy, you can go here to the settings and then select here at the bottom, require approval right here. Oops. And what that does is that students will not be able to see each other's posts until you, if you turn this on, you, you, once you turn, once you allow students, once you turn it back off, then everyone can see their posts. And so now, um, so you control the floodgates of when all these posts become public to the rest of the class. So that's similar to VoiceThread and similar to Blackboard discussion. So all three will, will give you that moderator feature to have them post before they can read everyone else's posts. The other pro to Padlet is that um, it promotes social learning, right? So if Mary posts her design or her you know, picture of her garment, students can learn from each other. So that's another great way. And Padlet is very, it's perfect for visuals. It's a great visual tool. It's almost like um, Pinterest on steroids for education. If you use Pinterest, <laughs> right? If you use Pinterest, you know that Pinterest is perfect for visuals. So if you have a very visual course and you want students to put in pictures, videos, anything you throw at it, when the student clicks on the plus sign, and they click on here, the three little dots, they can upload images, they re can record audio, they can do drawings, they can put links, they can put video, YouTubes, they can put music on, from Spotify, they can search images, they can, they can go meta, embed a Padlet inside another Padlet. They can record uh, the screen, they, they, they can record video, uh, sorry, uh, take a picture, a selfie. So if you're doing icebreakers, they could do selfies. If you want them to do a video response, they could do video. If you want them to post where they are, in, let's say this is a student in Asia, and they, you want them to tell you where they are, ge the ge geographic location, GPS, it will do it too. Or you could do a research base, right? Web search through Google. So anyway, let me move on because the last example, I'm running out of time. The last example that I want to show you is, where is it? Where is it? The stream. We talked about the stream, right? So here I'm prompting the students. Oh, and by the way, these are my video instructions. So if sometimes instructions don't go well. Students don't like to read or they have trouble reading or I don't know, they don't get the instructions. Sometimes it's better to see you and hear you tell or talk to them the instructions. Uh, so you can also put the first video as your instruction video and say, well, this is what I'm looking from you. I'm looking from you. I want you to tell me, this is the discussion prompt. Should celebrities weigh in on politics? Right? So, so that's the discussion prompt. And that's just me um, on video. 
reiterating the discussion prompt to them and asking them to do, um, it could be a team post. If you're pro, you could be in red. If you're against the uh, uh, celebrities and being involved, being vocal in politics, maybe change it to red. Or if you're pro, it could be green. And so maybe you might split up the class into two teams, those who are pro, those who are against. And then you might have one person from each team take turns. They take jabs, like a boxing match, right? So this could be a boxing match. And then one team goes first, the next team goes after, and it goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, until everyone has a say. Uh, and that's another fun way to do discussions. It could be a boxing match. OK, I think I, I used up all my time. So I'm going to stop there. And then if anybody has any questions or comments, we'll leave the last 10 minutes or eight minutes just to talk about what we just went through <laughs> through i know it was very quick it was like a tornado but i just i just want you to know that i'm you know we're here patricia also is another professor that you can you know ask for help or questions and then if you, if you want to buddy up with somebody and, and, and who has done this like a professor patricia or other professors i can point you to the right person or if you want to work with me i'll be happy to help you build discussions with any of these types of tools. So I'll stop there and I'll open it up for discussions for anyone to, you know, uh, comment or share ideas or concerns. Yes, Roberta? Um, I've tried Pad, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I've tried, tried Padlet in the past and I, I have difficulty with it because mm -hmm. I, I didn't do it in a discussion, I did it in a project, but everybody's narrow little strip got so incredibly long mm -hmm. that I'm thinking, that was for like term projects, but now I'm thinking for discussions, it might be a better use for it. But even then, what do you do about the imbalance if one student wants to write an essay, you know, four long, wonderful paragraphs and another student just writes one essay, I think it's good that they see the length of each other's and kind of it puts pressure on them. But is there right. any way to kind of manage that well? Yes, that's a great question, Roberta. There's several ways you can do it. Going back to your first example as an assignment, for that assignment, normally you go a higher level, um, which is the on your own Padlet, individual Padlet, right? Because if it's a big project, it, it becomes overwhelming as you as you saw you know these columns are just for one person can can be overwhelming if they're putting a lot of information in there so for that i would have gone with an individual padlet where they the student clicks on the assignment the padlet clones itself and assigns itself to the particular student to, for every individual student it does it for you you don't even have to do anything and then they can work on their own. They have the whole space, the whole Padlet. That gives them more space. So that's the answer to the first problem. The second, uh, what I've seen faculty do is, a lot of them are, a lot of the students now are using Google Docs. And so they'll do a big essay, let's say a 500 or a, a 10 page paper. And Patricia has done this, where the students um, actually write a paper and then they'll link it through, the, they'll link the 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 paper through either Google Docs or wherever it's saved, and that and that could be on the Padlet, and that can also be done in Blackboard discussions. I think Patricia, you used it in mm -hmm. Blackboard discussions. I think where students can actually put the link to the paper. With Padlet, it opens up natively in the Padlet. In Blackboard discussion, it opens a new tab to Google Docs. So that's mm -hmm. a difference there. So that's something you might want to consider. If you want it to be open right then and there, everyone can read it. Padlet will be a better visual oh. representation for that. So, so that would be the better way to do it. And uh, um, the shelf template is more for, uh, for either for scaffolding mm -hmm. an assignment. And that will work great for an assignment, uh, Roberta. You can do say, OK, step one, I want, I want you to give me the sales for March. Uh, 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 second step. Now I want you to give me the uh, uh, which 
uh, which stores? Is it on Macy's? Are we looking at, are we looking at, uh, um, uh, Beth, Beth, whatever, Old Navy, whatever, is it in front of the store, in the back of the store? Step three, what is the branding? What's the, step four, what's the, the packaging? So that's more of a, that could be the shelf template yeah. for more, uh, uh, but then you could do it as an individual padlet because that's a big project. Nice. Okay. Thanks. Sure. And I'll be happy to help you if you need help building it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any, any other uh, questions or comments? If not, I'm just going to post the link to the survey. I'm, su I'm supposed to do these now, so I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> I got to put these links can to I, the survey. Can I just, uh, before you sure. go to the survey, can I just, uh, <laughs> I'm just, I'm stuck on the fact that it's just Blackboard, right? Blackboard discussion that'll link to the Blackboard gradebook, though. Other, otherwise, um, if you're oh, going to yeah. do VoiceThread or Padlet, Okay, I just want to make sure that. Uh... Thank you for thank you, Pamela, for bringing that back because I, I did forget to mention that here's the con, here's the con for Padlet. It's that and is that one uh, when you start the grading process. You do the grading process separately from Padlet. You're gonna have to go straight to the gradebook. That's the biggest con with Padlet. Right, because now you you're looking at these students' work. Now you have to jump into the gradebook, create a column. Well, you don't have to create a column. If you do enable evaluation, it'll create the column for you in the gradebook. And then you manually enter those grades. I've been talking to the folks at Padlet on this for a long time. I've been sending them emails, please, 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 please do this for us because it's annoying that it's not integrated. Into, it doesn't push the grades into the gradebook. Um, they're telling me they might have it soon, but we'll see what happens. Um, but that's the biggest con for Padlet. But VoiceThread, VoiceThread it's has the it. Same though, for VoiceThread also. Well, VoiceThread, no, VoiceThread. Oh, it does connect to the gradebook. Yes. So the the two the the two tools that we covered today that do connect to the gradebook is Blackboard Discussions and VoiceThread. Those two, you can. Enter the grade right in right in the tool where you are actually watching the the discussions as it, as they happen. You can go in there and put in the grade, and the grade will get pushed directly into the gradebook. You don't have to do anything after that. Once you enter the grade in in VoiceThread or Blackboard discussion, it will show up in the gradebook. Got it. Awesome. Thank thank you again for asking because I know I missed I knew I was yeah, missing yeah. something. <laughs> and 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 Padlet, we don't have it yet. I'm but obsessed I'm hoping... with the gradebook. You're, you're obsessed with. I'm sorry, with. Oh, sorry, the I was obsessed with the gradebook connections. <laughs> I'm just make sure. <laughs> no, it's very important. Um, and, and to your point before, you said with the um, the rubric, it's another another. I mean, if you are going to use rubrics, I can tell you it will speed up the grading. Not only will speed up the grading for you as a as a professor, students love it, and Patricia knows it very well because then the students cannot challenge you because it's all right there for them. They can't say, "Well, I didn't get points for this," but hey, go back to the it's right there on the rubric. It tells you why you got that point, you know. Um, so, anyway, all right. So we're right at the three o'clock mark. If anyone uh, has questions or want to stay behind. I, I'm happy to stay a little longer, but I, I'll stop here because I want to be considerate of everybody else's time. And I'm just going to, I'll put the link in here real quick. If, if you guys have time, please, you don't have to do it right away, but if you, if you can do the survey, because now I'm supposed to start reporting these. Uh, let me put it in there real quick for you all. Okay, where's the link? Here's the link. And I, I will post it into the chat. And I'll, I will also email the, the link. So don't worry about it. You, you don't have to do it now. I will send a follow-up email with the link to the recording and a link to some resources on discussions and the link to the survey so that you will have everything in one shot. I don't want to force anyone to, 
two things right now, but if you want, you can do it right now. It's there. Um, but I'll stop there. Let me stop the recording.